Hey, we kick off our Patriot League previews this week with our eyes on the Greyhounds. Let's start. Yeah, Loyola coming off a trip to the NCAA quarterfinals, lost to Penn State there. Third trip to the quarterfinals in the last four years for the Greyhounds, so it's been good. Overall, though, it was an up and down year for Loyola. They got all the way up to number one early in the country, early in the year, before they lost this game to Towson, but ended up 12 and 5, ultimately upset in the semifinals of the Patriot League tournament before getting an at large berth into the NCAA. As Loyola looks ahead to 2020, they have a lot of pieces to replace, including maybe maybe the best ever to play for the program, attackman Pat Spencer. He graduated ranked second in NCAA history in career points, finishing just 20 shy of Lyle Thompson's record. Spencer also rewrote just about every offensive record in school, Patriot League history, while winning Loyola its first Tour Ton award. Unfortunately, Spencer isn't the only guy Greyhounds have to replace offensively. They also lost All-American midfielder Chase Scanlon to transfer. He's now at Syracuse wearing the legendary number 22. As a freshman for the Hounds, Scanlon ranked third on the team, scored 43 goals, put up 58 points. Don't forget about the goalie position. Loyola also has a big piece to replace there. After being the starter for parts of all four seasons on campus, Jacob Stover has graduated. He Stover's was, no longer lit. Hmm turned the stove down. He was especially important this past season with a really young defense stopping an NCAA best nearly 15 shots a game. So let's talk about who's coming back. Yeah. Kevin Lindley enters his junior season as the Greyhounds uh, coming off a 64 point season scored 60 goals. Mm. It's a lot four assists so he did have a couple helpers uh, 23 more goals than his freshman year as he as the finisher on that attack unit alongside Pat Spencer life is good when you play along side Pat Spencer a little different role this year Aiden Olmstead missed a couple of games with an injury in 2019 but still improved his point total from his freshman season scoring 46 25 goals six more than in 2018 when he played in 17 contests as opposed to the 15 he played in in 2019 shout out to the Corning New York native mm. uh, like last year Loyola starts the season with Virginia they beat the eventual national champion 17 to 9 to open the 2019 season it was a big statement win for Loyola early this time around they got to go to Charlottesville they continue that tough month of February with Hopkins, Rutgers, and Towson. They play Duke on the exact same day they did last year. That's March 7th. This time it's a Saturday. Patriot League play heating up in April when they take on Navy, finishing up with Lehigh. That's a big game. Mountain Hawks should be good this year. That's on April 24th. Patriot League tournament starts on April 28th. Charlie Toomey entering his 15th season at the helm of Loyola. The alum of Loyola and former goalkeeper won the title as a coach back in 2012. With the final four appearance in 2016. They've gone to the quarterfinals the last two seasons. So now we bring in over the phone the head coach of Loyola, Charlie Toomey. Coach, thanks so much for the time tonight. Uh, just so I guess we should start with Pat Spencer, obviously leaving the program, such a big impact he made for you guys. Uh, where does life begin after Pat Spencer now? <laughs> you know, I, I, it's it's been an interesting fall. You know, what we've really asked a lot of guys to do is to, you know, pick up a little bit of production. Obviously, I don't think any one guy can pick up the amount of production that, that Pat left us with. Uh, but we've been real excited about, you know, obviously the guys that we have returning. And it probably starts with Kevin Lindley and Aiden Olmstead down at attack and really, you know, just trying to, almost go back to how we used to play we it's going to be important for us to pick up ground balls and to play fast uh in transition um to try and generate some uh some you know unsettled goals uh whereas we've been in the past able to kind of do a little bit more in the six on six i think we're going to try and pick the tempo up like we we have in the past and you know try to try to get some of those goals back for ourselves yeah, and you think about some of the experiences your guys were able to have down the stretch last year. I'm sure those games, uh, you know, those in the NCAA tournament were huge, especially a team like Penn State, one of the best offense in the country last year. And you had, you know, not as much experience on the defensive side. How much do you think that's going to help this group of younger guys on that back end, along with it, uh, you're going to have a new goalie too uh, with Stover uh, um, graduating. How much does a game like that help some of that youth and gaining that experience moving into 2020? No question. I, I, I'm, I'm real happy with our team's identity. You know, truthfully, uh, being a former goaltender myself and, and probably having a, a, a more of a footprint down on that side of the field with Coach Juan, um, I think that's where our leadership is. I think that's where the guys that are returning, 
you know, we're, we're going to have to really lean on ourselves defensively, one, to kind of figure out who that goalie is and, and to, you know, get the production that we've been able to expect out of, you know, out of that position and stuff. But, but two, you know, just having guys like Cam Wires, who had such a great year as a freshman, and Matt Hughes, who we know coming back off an injury is going to be a stopper for us. So, uh, and, and then obviously our whole rope unit being intact, um, you know, that's a position we feel of strength. And uh, and obviously, when you open up with Virginia and, you know, and, and then play Hopkins and then have Duke right around the corner after Rutgers, you know, you, you better have uh, you better have things kind of buttoned down on that side of the field. And it's OK to grow up on the offensive end, but you've got to you, it's tough to grow up on the defensive end. Obviously, you've started. I was going to ask about the schedule. I'm glad you mentioned some of those opening games. Uh, you've started, you know, with some tough, uh, tough slate at the beginning of the year. How does that impact things in terms of fall ball in preseason, knowing the tough teams you have this year at Virginia, the national champions um, coming in just the first week of the year? You know, that's just been a great game for us, whether or not they're national champions. Uh, you know, we, we just we have a, a great respect for that program. Um, it's been a it's been a fast game, you know, one that where both teams kind of get up and down the field and find out about a lot about themselves uh, over the last, you know, I don't know if it's been a six year rivalry now or seven, but, um, you know, it's always been an exciting game to start the year off. And uh, what we tend to do is, you know, we're, we're always very happy with how we compete in a win or a loss. Uh, but I think it really prepares us for the next game, and that's Johns Hopkins. Uh, and just the speed and the tempo of that type of game gets you ready for the for what's coming. And uh, and so you know we're we're real excited about the uh, the opportunities you know that we have prior to getting into Patriot League play. Yeah, interesting your approach to that first game against Virginia like you've had in the past because last year obviously you did quite well. I mean, better than a lot of teams did against that team all year long. Um, is it sort of more of a, a feel type game rather than just looking at that result that'll help you later in the season, you figure, like you mentioned? Well, you know, again, obviously it's one that's meaningful because, you know, the winning the, the winner of that game you know, that's a game that they're going to look at mm. come in May, you know, for seeding and certainly for strength of schedule and things like that. So um, it's, it's a big game that you're you're opening your year off with. But I also think you have to be realistic. And, you know, I, I would imagine that we're still going to be tinkering with our midfields. Um, I know Virginia might be tinkering with with some things defensively, uh, you know, where that that's where they're a little bit young. So you know, again, it's uh, it's just going to be a great game for the fans and a great way to open the season for both programs. Yeah, always interesting to see how things change year by year, uh, especially you can mention some of the personnel on both sides. Um, finally, speaking of personnel, you're going to be going down to San Antonio this weekend, the spring premiere of Team USA. That's correct? Yeah, looking forward to it. Getting on a plane on Friday and uh, having my second opportunity to walk the sidelines with Coach Zanowski, Tierney, and Amplo, and, uh, you know, the guys that uh, – that'll go down there with us just I am I'm in awe you know of of just how hard they play how professional they are um, you know you kind of live in that bubble of Loyola and our own kids but then uh, to go down there and and to really you know compete at that next stage it's just it's been a, a lot of fun for me and I'm, I'm appreciative of that opportunity coach Zanowski let me out. Yeah, what impact does that sort of make on maybe your philosophies, not maybe so to speak, or your coaching? I mean, you probably coached against a lot of these guys uh, in the past at Loyola, and and getting to know them a little bit better. You know, how does that impact when you go back to school too? Well, you know, it's funny <laughs> after the fall, I, uh, and, and we had that opportunity to play against Canada out at Sparks. You know, you 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 basically, I'm I'm working with goaltenders and helping out. You know, obviously on the defensive end with Coach Amplo. Uh, but then kind of really putting a, fi a fingerprint on the on the man down. And uh, you could tell those guys once what you want to do, and they do it, you know. And, and they do things to, to exactly how you want to do it. And so then you got to go off of a weekend of, of playing such a high level and then look at your own guys again, and you're like, why can't we do it that way? <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It really is. And, um, you know, to, to play, you know, and to be a part of something that, you know, is bigger than college lacrosse is, is really special. Yeah, that's really cool for sure. We'll be watching it obviously very closely here at LSN. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Be watching your team too here come spring. We appreciate the time this evening. No worries. Thanks for having me, Tom. Appreciate it. You look at what Toomey and company are going to have to tackle at the Patriot League as a whole. This thing looks to be wide open in 2020. Loyola obviously lost a bunch as we hit on already. 
BU lost star Chris Gray to transfer. Army now without shutdown defenseman Johnny Serdic. It's going to be very interesting to watch the Patriot League as a whole this season. Remember, stay tuned all week. We'll continue to preview the Patriot League all week long, even into the new year. We're almost to 2020.